Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, uh, well, I'm a bit late on this one. I was going to do it yesterday, but I ended up getting home from work pretty late and uh, decided to say F it and just go right to bed. Now, I know that this chilly thing has been covered to death by a number of the anti-auditor channels and even a lot of the other lawyer channels. But still, I want to have a crack at it myself so I can have all my bases covered. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now, the first thing that needs to be pointed out here is the fact that this uh, officer right here is pointing to a sign that uh, for Chili's benefit, that there are no recording devices allowed in the courtroom in, uh, unless otherwise authorized 24 hours in advance of the trial. Uh, so Chili's going to have a little bit of a tantrum over this particular item, but if he would have bothered to do any bit, little bit of research, he would have been able to find the uh, Nevada media policy, which clearly lays this out for you. You can get authorization, Chili, but you just can't bring it in the courtroom at your own whim. It doesn't work that way. Are you Mr. DeCastro? Yeah. Can, can you turn off the phone, please? The one yeah, that's I'm in your just, hand? Just finish it with my lawyer. He's on his way here now. So I'm just waiting for him to get there. All right, I'm going to wait for your attorney, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jose DeCastro, 23 CR 013015. Good morning, Your Honor. Agnes Patello, and this is Kate for the record. Good morning, State. Good morning, Mike. Me on behalf of the defendant, President Pete, this morning. So I have signed two media requests that permit recording or photographing these proceedings, but I have not granted any other requests to record or live stream these proceedings. So I need Mr. DeCastro and everybody else who wants to stay in the courtroom to surrender their phones. Hey, Chili, if you weren't so in love with your own farts, maybe you would have had the time to uh, look up this uh, Nevada courtroom media policy. It only took me one minute to find it on the Google machine and to verify it. So, Chilito, uh, what is your damn excuse for being so incompetent? Are your phone calls not Any Mr. DeCastro to empty all of his pockets? What's that? Yeah, your pockets, pockets and give up your phones to the judge. Okay. I have to give you my phones? Yeah. My phones have to be completely off? Yeah. I don't really want to be part of your YouTube channel. Sorry. You already are. Great. Right? You already are. Awesome. No. I'm not going to get into this guy, though. I'll get him some else. No. no, they're going to go to my marshal. He's a pig. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Okay. Your screw-ups just keep on building more and more and more. But the iceberg goes even deeper than anybody ever thought. Because if you watch this lawyer break down this opening uh, power struggle between the judge and Chili, then you'll know that... Uh, Chili could have been charged at least nine times with contempt of court in uh, this few minute period. So let's watch his analysis on this and we'll go to the uh, last few minutes of the trial where Chili is testifying. And let's see what we can do with any of that crap that hasn't already been done. OK, there's rude. That is borderline contempt when she says, I don't want to be on your YouTube channel. You already are. You don't address a judge that way and look at her facial reaction. Awesome. No. I'm not going to give it to this guy, though. I'll give him someone else. Now Chili says he doesn't want to give it to the marshal. He's going to give it to someone else. No, no. no. they're going to go to my marshal. That's a second potential contempt. And the judge said no, and he did it anyway. He's a, he's a pig. 
He's a pig. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Okay. That permits you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. And if you don't want to apologize, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I apologize to the court, Your Honor. No, you can apologize to. They've done nothing to you. Actually, Your Honor, when you were here, you came over and gave me a directive for no reason, sort of telling me what to do. Not true. The court, the, the judge has already issued an order, no phones in the courtroom, and he pointed to the sign. This, I don't have any recording devices on me. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Another contempt. Two jacket. <laughs> I don't have anything on me. This is preposterous. No, this is preposterous. Another contempt. Yes. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Mr. Me, your phone too. Oh. They're recording everything. <laughs> More arguing. They have, they have a media request. Right, and I'm, I'm not recording anything. That your your guy here took my phone, so he's on his phone's not on. Right. Your guy here. <laughs> you take the lawyer's phone too? No, I'm not going to take the lawyer's phone. He's an officer of the court. Did you hear that? Chili says you're going to take my lawyer's phone, and she says I'm not going to take the lawyer's phone. He's an officer of the court. Did you hear that? We're officers of the court. We do get a lot of privileges. Three hundred and forty-six minutes later. Yeah, Chili would know what the truth was if it came and bit him in the ass. I mean, all you got to do is take a look at his trifold and uh, break it down because there are so many channels out there that have, uh, well, uh, broken it down to its base components and found it to be a pile of crap to begin with. So that's one big lie right there. Uh, but if you want a further analysis on that uh, trifold of his, one source I would recommend would be uh, one of Fraud or the Reaper's videos on that particular subject. So on the screen right now, you should be seeing a screenshot of the title of the video. So you can go look it up for yourself after you get done viewing this one and take a look at the breakdown of that uh, trifold. I mean, there are other channels that break it down, but I think she did a good enough job on that, uh, much like everybody else did, because that was just a, a huge waste of paper right there. You see that? Mr. DeCastro, before you testify, I'm obligated to inform you that you have the right to testify in this proceeding, but you also have the right to remain silent. And should you choose to remain silent, I may not hold that against you in making my decision. Do you understand that? I do. And do you still wish to testify? Yes, I do. All right, please go ahead. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. Can you um, give some insight into what that channel is about? Objection, relevance. What's the relevance? Your Honor, the relevance is that we're presenting a First Amendment defense, and the defendant is a member of the press. Um, there, there's different standards for First Amendment rulings where there is public policy at issue. Um, he, he can give insight into that. I'm going to allow it for a bit and see where it goes. Yes, I do have a first. I, I do have a YouTube channel, and the reason I have a YouTube channel is because of how many cops kill people every year, how many cops hurt, maim, torture, rape, and kill people every single year. It's such an epidemic that the rest of the world, I get thousands of emails saying, only in America does this happen. And what evidence are you citing, Chile, besides what other people are saying? Have you bothered to take a look at any actual data? Or anything like that? Have you bothered to travel across the world and actually do studies on their police departments and see what the hell's going on? No? Then why the hell are you uh, pulling this crap out of your ass? Because if you look at some data st statistics, yeah, the United States is not exactly the best as far as policing goes, but it sure as hell isn't the worst one. In fact, it's either Brazil or or uh, Venezuela that often ends up the worst ones on the list. Uh, but really, Chile, you really need to, uh, well, get your head out of your ass. I started filming cops because when I was cheated in 2002. Objection at this point. Uh, Relevance. Well, this is the British Regal Member of the Press. This narrative. So can you ask him a question? Yes, Ryder. What type of films do you make for your YouTube channel? 
I only film police in their official capacity. I'm known across the country and across the world. And why uh, do you engage in that type of filming? So I'm going to ask you, Mr. Me, to direct your questions about the incident in question. The reason I was filming Mr. Gort that day? Objection, Your Honor. Oh, oh sorry. So there wasn't a question posed. So oh, I I'm not sure what he was Mr. DeCastro, um, on the dating question, why did you approach that vehicle? I was filming that cop because that's what I do for a living. I am a member of the press, and I invoked my right to be press. I always invoke my right to be press within the first 10 seconds of engaging with police, and I have thousands of videos to prove this. So this is how you make money? This is not how specifically I make money. I make money from selling legal documents to people. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Chili, did you just happen to lie on the stand? Because if uh, you don't make any money on YouTube, or not all that much money, then what the hell do you call this? Over $100,000 a month on YouTube? Uh, yeah, dude, you are one big fat mother effing liar. Do you recall the officer telling you to back up? Yes, I do. And what did you do after he told you to back up? I took a couple steps back. I just showed him that I was willing to back up a little bit. However, if I may, in Arizona, they created a 10-foot law. Objection. Relevance. We're not in Arizona. It's the state of Nevada. So I'm going to allow it because I think that goes to why he kept saying 10 feet in the video, even though um, I will take judicial notice that you're not in the state of Arizona, you're in the state of Nevada. Well, a federal judge struck it down, Your Honor, and what? Stop. Can you ask me a question? Yes, Your Honor. Um, approximately how many feet did you back up? I backed up a foot or two. I was at least 10 feet away from that car that the driver was pulled over in. And when you spoke to the driver, what did you say? Just after she was okay. The, the reason I filmed police is because they abuse people so often. Do you recall the officer telling you not to speak with the driver? Yes. And did you uh, make any statements to the driver after that command was given? Absolutely not. Did the officer ever give you a specific distance to back up to? No, he didn't. If he did, would you have complied with that? Sure. Did you believe you were complying with the officer's commands? 100%. I also informed him I'm a member of the press and a constitutional law scholar that this is what I do. Do you recall the officer explaining to you why he decided to arrest you? There's several parts to the reason why he said he was going to arrest me. He said he was going to arrest me because I wouldn't turn my head a certain direction. If I didn't turn and face the car with my head, that he would place me under arrest instead of just giving me a ticket. Do you recall him explaining why he decided to detain you before he arrested you? He decided to obtain me because he said I was obstructing, which from my understanding is a physical act where I would have to get in the way. He said that the driver deserved privacy. I believe my First Amendment rights are not up for feelings. Well, it looks like you actually fell for the frauditor myth that uh, obstruction is a physical act. And this is one of those things where you should have actually done your research because, well, you can be uh, obstructing a traffic stop just by your mere presence. If the officer has to take their attention away from the uh, traffic stop and pay attention to you, especially when you're going over there, uh, entering their physical space and calling them names and everything like that and berating, belittling, uh, acting like a complete moron, then yeah, you are obstructing the uh, investigation or uh, obstructing the traffic stop or whatever. You are doing that. And, and then there's little matter of, uh, well, you didn't care about the uh, privacy of the uh, person in the car. I mean, the person in the car did not ask you for help. The person in the car uh, didn't need any help at that time. But yet you say 
that their feelings didn't matter. Because if you're going up there to protect them from the mean old officer, then that means you probably thought the feelings did matter. Well, which is it, dude? Did they matter or did they not matter? Either way, you're not making yourself look at any better or any smarter in this particular situation. Did he explain to you that the basis of your detention was related primarily to the issue of privacy or the issue of you backing up? Well, I think from the officer's testimony, we can see that he's scared of the driver, scared of me, scared of everything. They teach them to be afraid of everything. So I had two cameras out. It's identified as a member of the press. I'm sorry, repeat the question. I, I want to get it specific for the record. Sure. Um, the question was, did the officer explain to you that the basis of your detention was because of you not backing up or because of the privacy issue of the driver? It was both. He said that, he told me to back up. I backed up a little bit. Then he said, she deserves privacy. And then I told him to go get in your car, little doggy, and write your ticket. And at that point, his face turned beet red and his veins and his neck stuck out because we were over 20 feet away. And there you go again. You just blew your whole case up right there once again. You just admitted that uh, you were antagonistic. You quoted yourself by saying, little doggy. In other words, you were attempting to antagonize the officer from the very start. You are a freaking dumbass for sitting on the stand and not even attempting to plead the fifth in this particular scenario because, well, it probably would have uh, ended up better off if you would have pleaded the fifth. But they still had the video evidence, so you probably would have been still screwed. And you had to holler to hear each other because the wind was probably 30 miles an hour. Did you at any point um, attempt to hit any of the officers involved? No. Absolutely not. Did you uh, intentionally swat any of the officers? Absolutely not. He was giving me unlawful commands. I should not have been detained after I identified as a member of the press. Hey, you big dummy. Being a member of the press doesn't grant you any special privileges. And then there's the matter of unlawful orders. It is not for you to decide what is an unlawful and unlawful order out on the streets. That is determined in the courts later on. I mean, if the officer needed you to back up, then that is a lawful order. Now, if he'd asked you to go out and murder somebody, then that would have been an unlawful order, and you could have just gone away and not done anything about it except report the officer for even giving you that command to do so. Do you see the difference between what is lawful and unlawful? Probably not, because you probably won't ever see this video anyway, you freaking dipshit moron. If he ever reached a hand out towards me, I wrestle and teach MMA and I have for 30 years, so it's just a natural reaction as I'm retreating from somebody. If I may have put my hand up, as he said, as he testified himself, I certainly am a law-abiding citizen. I don't break the law. Bullshit. Bullshit. So I would not have tried to assault an officer under any circumstances. Is it possible that uh, during the interaction there was inadvertent contact between you and the officer? Sure, he decided to go hands-on with me when he was giving me unlawful commands. And there was absolutely no reason for it. I was willing to comply with anything he asked within reason. Because I don't want to have a fist fight with another street, with another man on the street. What do you consider to be reasonable, you dipshit? I mean, backing up a few feet is not reasonable? I mean, that is probably one of the more reasonable, lawful orders an officer can give you. I mean, come on now, dude. You're making yourself look like a complete and total dumbass. Wait, oh, no, wait. You've already done that over the past few years, but please, could carry on. Do you recall the officer ordering you to go to his patrol vehicle? I do. And what did you do in response to that? Initially, I told him no, but then when he began to get physical with me and start to grab me and touch me, I said, okay, I'll go over to your car. His car was 35 feet away. I then led him to his car. It's on video. You can see it. I would walk right up to his car, and then he insisted still on grabbing me. After he saw me pull out an additional phone, 
which that's what press people do. We had lots of cameras on us. And did you inform uh, the officer that you were a member of the press? Oh, several times. There's, it's, in the, it's in the transcripts. I've transcribed them myself. Several times I told him I'm a member of the press. And did you explain to the officer that um, you have a background in constitutional law? Yes, I told him I'm a constitutional law scholar, which was a moniker given to me by other people who are also, they have their own channels, their own press, and that's what some other lawyers on another channel called me three years ago. And I since adapted the moniker. Scholar is a moniker that you certainly haven't earned. You didn't put any research into anything that you spout off. I mean, your trifold is one gigantic example of that. Many people have torn that thing to pieces and left it in the garbage as a, a monument to your own stupidity. Just to get some I guess, further background, were you looking for uh, police to report on this particular day? No. No, there's, there's, the cops hide on the side of the road so you pull people over. It's pretty regular in our country. I was just in the parking lot there. I saw that Mr. Bork had somebody pulled over, concerned for her safety. I began to film. And why do you think um, that law enforcement traffic stops are relevant to you? Public. That's where most people get killed. Section relevance. I studied that question. Who's just right? Sting. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. State. I have no questions for this witness. Thank you. Sir, you step down. Well, uh, Let's just go ahead and skip to the verdict, the sentencing, and the eventual cuffing, shall we? Many, many minutes later. All right, Mr. Castro, please stand. The problem with the argument that your attorney makes is it completely fails to consider the safety of the officer and the safety of the driver. The officer doesn't know who you are, and the driver doesn't know who you are. And you don't have any right to interfere with that officer doing his investigation and deciding if he wants to issue a ticket to this driver. And you are also don't have any business approaching the driver. The driver didn't ask you for help. The driver didn't say, help, help, you know. You didn't see an altercation happening between the officer and this driver. Um, the officer didn't protest that you were filming. There's no problem with filming. You can film, it's fine, all right? But you did interfere with his investigation. You did interfere with his ability to do his job. You did put him in a position where he is concerned for his safety and the safety of the driver. So I believe the state's met their burden beyond reasonable doubt. I'm going to find you guilty of obstructing a public officer. <laughs> and resisting a public officer. So I'd like to hear from the state and then your attorney prior to sentencing. Your Honor, in terms of sentencing, I would ask um, that our uh, defendant enter and complete a, um, an impulse control class. I would ask that the court lobby a $500 fine or the equivalent in community service. I would ask that the defendant be ordered to stay out of trouble um, for the pendency of the case. Um, and I would ask for a 90-day suspended sentence. Well, Madam Prosecutor, uh, that's a bit of a light sentence right there. Uh, a little too light for the judge's liking because she's about to, uh, well, lay down the law on this well, pathetic excuse for a human being. And that's on as to each count to one concurrent. That's our request. Thank you. Your Honor, I'm asking the court to sentence the defendant to credit for time served for these offenses. Um, even if the court concludes, and the court did conclude that he didn't have the right to do what he did, um, I, I think the court can see that he sincerely believed uh, that, that he had the right to do so. Um, that, that's based on his past experiences and the, the training he's received in reference to the First Amendment. What kind of training did he receive in the First Amendment? Uh, 
sir, because I would certainly like to know where he got that training and uh, find out how stupid they are for even allowing this buffoon in their classrooms anyway. Um, I don't think there's any intent from the defendant to engage in any wrongdoing in this case, Your Honor. Um, and that being the case, especially because of the public policy interests at, at issue. So when you say he doesn't wish to engage in any wrongdoing, it seems to me from observing him in the video that he wants he wants this. He wants to get arrested. He wants to get into an altercation with police officers. He welcomes this. This helps his YouTube channel. He called the officers here in my courtroom today pigs. He called the, and he's not his head up and down. I so apparently he hates every law enforcement officer in the United States. All right, please stand up, sir. Are you finished with your request for credit for time, sir? Um, I, I would just emphasize, Your Honor, that the defendant testified and he sincerely believes that he is providing a public service um, when he right. reviews and builds these incidents. Um, I understand the court may have a different view of that, but when we're talking about First Amendment public policy issues such as um, supervising uh, people involved in government, I, I think that is something the court can take into consideration, not to have a show effect on that. I'll spit on that, Your Honor. Mr. DeCastro, please stand. I hereby sentence you to 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count one, 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count two, to run consecutive for a total of 180 days in custody. In fact, it is pretty much the damn truth. You're a failure at being a Power Ranger. You're a failure at being an actor. You're a failure at being a constitutional law scholar. You're a failure as a decent human being. You're a failure and a researcher. You are a failure at life. So congratulations, dude. You are a freaking moron. Now I would like to thank my subscriber who sent me this particular picture right here. It is most fitting for this particular uh, style of moron right here. I mean, where'd your trifle get you in this particular scenario, dude? I mean, it got you no. Your phony baloney knowledge of the law and legal skills, well, fake legal skills got you absolutely no. So enjoy your time in jail, enjoy Bubba and the boys, enjoy their company, because I'm sure they will enjoy your company. So at any rate guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.
Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?